Hello and a big welcome back to all my subscribers. And if you're not a subscriber, what's wrong with you? Um, somebody recently, uh, Neil5466, uh, asked me to describe my experience of when I started doing some assembly language programming and, you know, how I felt and, and you know, what I did. So I thought I'd just run through that with you. I actually only started doing assembly language programming fairly recently, within the last two or three years. And uh, I've always been fascinated by assembly language. And I did a few attempts on IBM x86 programming, but I never really got into it. I never really did it much or used it because mostly on Intel based CPUs, I always use C for pretty much everything, um, low level. And then if it wasn't C, then I used re more recently Rust. Um, but typically I would always use C for any low level programming or uh, pretty much anything. So C is always my go-to programming language. And I'm right here to add not C++, but C. Um, so I'm not a big fan of object oriented language. I didn't I can do Java, but I don't really like it. Um, so, but anyway, uh, so as far as assembly language goes, I never really did any more than sort of dip my foot in it. I do have, uh, you know, the Donald Knuth Art of Computer uh, Programming books, which uh, uses a sort of a made up assembly language to explain the examples and things. But I never really used assembly language per se until uh, the sort of lockdowns for the pandemic when I started making my own 8-bit CPU on a breadboard thing, which there are videos on my site. Um, and as a consequence of making that particular CPU, I needed some way to program it. And so uh, I decided to write my own assembler, uh, which again, there's, a, there's a, a video on my site. I did it in Rust. Um, but to be fair, before that, I really didn't understand, even though I use C, I really didn't understand the concepts of registers and transfers within the CPU as well as I should. But having built a CPU, I absolutely understood all of that and the machine code and all of the things um, and the architecture and all of that good stuff. And so I decided to revisit uh, assembly language programming. Uh, I still didn't want to do it on an x86 and I have five or six Raspberry Pis lying around. And so I decided to do ARM assembly language programming. And I've done quite a few programs in ARM um, in assembly language. Um, I did a game, you know, Reversi, uh, all of the typical reverse string puzzles, exercises, all of that kind of stuff. Um, I even wrote a program that basically you give it a project name and it builds all of the files and folders and directories and the .s files and the make files and everything you need to start a new assembly language project in an, on an ARM processor. Um, so I was using that quite a bit and then I was using that to also try out GPIO pins and things like that. So if you have access to a Raspberry Pi, uh, then you know you can easily start doing ARM programming. Now, uh, most of the videos recently on my site have been around RISC-V um, assembly language programming, which I'm using on an emulator, and those videos are around somewhere. And for Christmas, I got one of these, which is a RISC-V dev board. So I'm currently trying to hook that up and see how we get on with that. Uh, probably start with C programming and then move to assembly to, to test that board out. Um, but I'm not uh, actively using that particular development board at the moment. Um, 
but yeah so basically i started doing assembly language very very late uh a lot of people do assembly language straight away in their career or you know um but i never really did that i was always doing um c programming or scripting like perl um in the main um uh, more recently python um and so when i did the py uh the 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 sort of a cpu um emulator in python series uh you know i also wrote another assembler um, because by that point I'm, I was pretty au fait with all of the the sort of instruction set that I wanted to have um, and also writing the CPU and the assembler I learned the sort of weird constraints that the people who designed these assembly languages are sort of stuck with you know they, they, they're, they're very constrained about what the number of of, um, of instructions they can have, uh, the the registers that it will affect, the memory locations, how it works. You know, it's very interesting. And so, if you don't really know about that, I would suggest that you look into uh, James uh, James Sharman's website, uh, the YouTube channel where he's built a, a CPU. Um, Ben Eater videos are great where he's built his 8-bit CPU and he does a lot of assembly language programming for a 6502. Uh, I'm currently working on putting together a Motorola 68K single board computer mostly because I want to do assembly language programming uh, for that CPU and write a bootloader and a sort of a miniature OS for you know serial input and output and that sort of thing um, so more coming on that later but yeah that's basically how I got into assembly language programming it is really interesting but unlike C you can't just learn one um, and one and done it doesn't work like so for every CPU you're gonna have to learn the instruction set the assembly language instruction set for that particular um, CPU so it's a it, it's okay it's it can be a bit daunting to learn it for everyone I think if I was gonna suggest you kind of do what I did which is start out with risk you know reduced instruction set CPUs like arm or risk 5 or something like that um, but a lot of people start with x86 I'm not my forte i'm not particularly interested in doing it either um even though i've got a plethora of machines i could do it on uh it's not really uh, it doesn't really interest me if i was going to do something on uh, an intel then i'm probably doing something on an os like linux or windows in which case i just use c um or python or Perl or something so anyway that that's it for me it wasn't a very, it's not a very interesting story i don't think um a lot of people have a similar story i'm sure um and in this channel i generally don't do tutorials i just let people follow along with uh, me as i learn and as i screw it up and get it wrong and you know hopefully you can avoid those yourself when you try okay great well anyway if you like this sort of thing uh, as usual, you know, please like and subscribe and push the bell and share it about with your friends and, you know, uh, become an avid uh, subscriber, if you will. All right. Thanks a lot. See you soon.